there and welcome back to Fat Lads Going Goal. We're back just like we said we'll be back. And I'm your host and Fat Lad with the God Complex, Mark Watson. And in my bottom left-hand corner tonight. Pew, pew, pew. Come on and do the conga. Pew, pew, pew. It's conga night for sure. It's conga. It's conga night. So join the party, everyone. The dancing's just begun. We're all having fun tonight. Dance that conga till pew drops. We're never going to stop. Pew, better hang on tight. So everybody, pew, pew, pew. Come on and do the conga. We Chris Pew on Fat Lads Going Gold. I did not like that. <laughs> Why? Because you're anti-fun. I am very much anti, anti-party anti song classics. Does yeah. it remind you of your wedding and it's all been downhill since? No, no. <laughs> I made sure that that wasn't, wasn't played. Gonna have, wasn't going to have that sort of nonsense played at my wedding, was I? But, did you have any um, ABBA at your wedding? Uh, it's important I, to me that you didn't. It was, uh, no, it was very... Um, I was a good husband um, and the bride and a couple of bridesmaids very strongly demanded uh abba be played so i allowed on one you allowed which one i allowed them which one do you think was it waterloo dancing no, queen it was dancing queen oh uh, i know but i left the room to go to the bar at that point did so you go and stand I, in the corner facing I, the wall refusing yeah. to engage yeah i didn't i, I wasn't witness to the activities <laughs> of dancing queen at the time which in my head at my wedding, Never I didn't. Happened. I nothing happened under my watch. Did so. you take your ring off at that point and just flat out uh, refuse to? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. That would have been a bridge too that far. Probably been a bit bad luck. <laughs> been married seven hours or whatever it was at that point. Yeah. Anyway, hi we, Mark. Hi. Oh, we're, right, <laughs> we're back. Just like we said, we're back. We've got a show of two halves as we always do. Sometimes the first half about blues it always is the second half. We've got an interview, an actual interview with a real journalist, like a, one of them proper goes out there into like war zones and does journalism. Yeah, it's true. He, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get when you see it. Don't he, skip, don't skip all the way there now. Yeah, like listen it, it to us talk actually, nonsense. It, it does actually happen. Yeah, that is the best bit of this show. Mm. Don't skip to it yet, though. Well, you've got to get, you've got to get there. We've got to make you, some dick jokes first. You've got to get there. We're not going to make the dick jokes in front of the real journalist, are we? So, <laughs> no, 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 no. We have got not, not straight away. Ika Ferragotic yeah. on anyone on Twitter or X would have probably seen her talking about Arthur and the Arthur Cup and whatnot, and, and she's a, an adopted Brummie. And by the way, by the she way, was fantastic. She was. She's an interview what a, worth what listening to. What a brilliant to. interview that was. It was, it was. Like, genuinely, we're doing this episode backwards, so we're recording the first half yeah. afterwards, and I'm spent. I've got nothing left. It's all downhill from here. Yes, I um, agree. So we need to bring the energy, Pio. Do, do skip it. Just skip it. Yeah, actually, yeah, do skip, skip this. <laughs> no, don't skip it. <laughs> It's pre-season, baby. Let's just get on with it. Let's get on with the important stuff. <laughs> yeah, apparently pre-season doesn't count. I've had lots and lots of people tell me on that t- it's today correct. on Twitter. It's correct. Like, yeah. I got bored of replying, I know pre-season doesn't count, but I'm trying mm. to wind some Scottish people up to ah. let me wind the Scottish people. Uh, yeah, I gave up with that. Mm. Um, but this, Pewey, is our mm. last show before the live show. <laughs> no, it is not. It is. It is. It's currently the 25th of July. You'll be listening to this hopefully on the 26th of July. Our live show is the 2nd of August, so there's no show oh next week. Uh, initially, so have I got to actually start like planning material for this live show now then? You mean the material that's been planned for ages and we put loads of work that, and effort into it? My apologies, that's right. Yeah. Including that's costume exactly. changes and everything. Yeah, I've got you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so next week we won't have a show. Um, we were we did toy with the idea of streaming it live, but you know, was is on it, so there's always a risk no. um, of breaking the only rule we have, which I will reveal what our one rule is on, at the live show. Um, but it is going to be recorded. Uh, I don't know if we're going to put it out on YouTube for free, uh, put it out behind a paywall and all that money goes to Libby Mays, or put it out with a suggested donation to Libby Mays, but you don't have to. I don't know. Either way, if it is. Like Wikipedia. Like Wikipedia. Like Wiki- like the general- yeah. Put some real sub story. Mark and Pew work yeah. very hard on Fat That's Lads. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, the, there are still tickets left, but we went and laid out the venue the other day, earlier in the week, and the current numbers will look will fill it, basically. So it may be standing room. Uh, so if you are going to come, hopefully you're going to come, come early to get to guarantee yourself a seat is what I'm saying. It's not full to the point that we can't fit you in, 
but if you want to be able to sit down during the show, come come early-ish. It's almost it's all, we've gone full circle, haven't we? It's like it's almost like you're asking supporters to get to a venue early <laughs> to avoid any congestion towards close to the start of the show. I mean, I'm not saying the Blues could learn something from us, but <laughs> instead of all this like scan your barcode ticket bollocks, yeah, we've got a guest a list sheet with some names on it. Yeah, so yeah. Gary Cook, if you're listening, in future a spreadsheet uh, with. 20,000 names on it. Check them off as they come in. That'd be much quicker. Easy peasy. Did you get stuck at the turnstiles for the Rangers game, Julia? Uh, yes. Was it I your did. fault you got stuck at the turnstiles? No. Was it the person my, in front my... of you's fault that you got stuck at the turnstiles? <laughs> there may have been a couple. They, uh, um, uh, the Rangers, yeah. Rangers game was delayed by 15 minutes um, because of the turnstile issues. We turned up late as it was anyway, didn't we, Pure? And there was just a... Well, like, this a is the thing. You asked, me, you asked me whether I got stuck. And I didn't know whether you wanted me to admit that we actually turned up to the game together. Yeah, of course. Because, People just because, assume we're together. Yeah, but if I got stuck, you know I got stuck because you were with me and you got stuck as well with me, you say. But it, uh, yeah, who cares? We're yeah, trying right. to do a podcast like... Mm. I see what you did. Stop breaking the fourth wall or whatever. It's, it's going to pay, break people's hearts to know we're not in the same room when we record this. Yeah, well, that's true. People that's think true. that we're like hetero life mates. For, we should do that for, thing. Mark, Mark, pass me that pen, and then you pass a pen out of the screen. Do you have a and pen then, on your desk? I, yeah. I just grab it. Cheers, there we go, Mark. done. Sorry, Except sorry, my Mark. one was black and yours is white, never mind. Um, Thanks, Mark. <laughs> yeah, so we got through eventually. The We did a, a, a test event for these turnstiles earlier in the week where 100 of us turned up and we had a... You a, did. You sorry, did. yeah, I did. Well, you know. You. Face of blues. Um, you turned, and your mates. <laughs> me yeah. and my mates, given a wad of tickets to scan these barcodes mm-hmm. um, to get in, which some people... Um, framed as an event i think events yeah. was a stretch it was yeah hey, lads is a wad of tickets just go and scan the barcodes and make sure the turnstiles work but you were you were cordially invited though i was cordially invited mm. um you were yeah but that that was like a blues matters thing um but uh, they, they literally just said oi oscs can someone come and just scan barcodes for us uh, yeah. and we'll give you a pint as a thank you which Ultimately, is a lot cheaper than paying 100 members of staff an hour's overtime to scan the tickets they used yeah. us as, as free labors. You can't really blame them for it, but um, people were claiming like there was a tour and we were like treated to me. I mean, it, it was nice to be there, but I don't, we weren't like the red carpet wasn't rolled out, um, but it was nice to, to see the ground and see the pitch and the big screens and all that stuff. Um, but crucially, when we tested these turnstiles, we didn't scan any phone barcodes. Mm. And to my knowledge, that's where most of the issues occurred the other night. And the um, yeah, and the print off print at home tickets, wasn't it? I think were the uh, the, the were, club, were an issue as well. Club put a statement out saying there was a corrupt barcode on them, apparently. Right. Um, which I put my digital ticket into the Google Wallet, and that worked, which is all well and good. Like literally, second scan job him job done because he gave me a QR code. But I had no idea what a Google Wallet was until you told me. Well, no, but it's it's like really, if your technology technological knowledge spans to have you tried turning it off and turning it back on again, <laughs> then you might not be aware of all these things that Made you can do in that. terms of getting QR codes and this, that, and the other. So, yeah, I it's it was one of them. I think obviously um, going forward, um, experience using them will help. Um, but yeah, there's there's going to be have to be a um, a better way. They, I think they're still doing cards, aren't they? So for the season tickets. Yeah, if I remember rightly, yeah. you could pay an extra bit of money to get a season card. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it's going to come. It's going to be on the app, Blues app. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as I say those scanners seem to love QR like codes. They're they all, yeah, yeah. all about the QR codes. Mm. Um. Yeah. It, but, and yeah, the print and, and they've said, haven't they? The the individual match tickets now are, are going to be posted or collected. There's going to be no print at home yeah. facility anymore. So um, hopefully those sorts of issues won't be won't arise again, and and the process will be smoother as the uh, as the season goes on. Well, there's a whole IT outage, wasn't there? Um, earlier in the week and it affected yeah, everybody. No one tried yeah. to turn it off and on again, essentially. I don't want to be that guy that yeah. says, you know, that, that 
he's Mr. Know It All after the event. But yeah, basically. If they'd just, switch just it put, on, switch it back off. If they'd have put it into the Google wallet, they'd have got sorted. Yeah. That's what I yeah. learned. Um, but genuinely, I had never heard of a Google wallet before if you hadn't been stood next to me. My I assume that's the boyfriend. same as an Apple wallet, yeah. I assume so, but different but yours different billionaires' Google, pocket Apple. it's going into. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I would still be stuck there now. I wouldn't know. And you wouldn't have been able to sit next to me through the whole game. So, oh, you the lucky one. But what did you what think is... of the game, Puggio? 2-1. We won. We beat, we beat Rangers. Rangers we are, are worse than the League massive. One football team. We, we are, are massive. Fucking mass. we like, are I, massive. I know it's pre-season, but yeah. it was impressive, especially that first half here. Yeah, for the first hour, it was it was... Um, very, 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 very good to watch. Um, cohesive. Uh, there were every single move, every single pass was was with purpose, was with intent. Um, there were no passes. Didn't seem like any passes were be behind the player. Everything was in front, so the move could carry on with pace. Um, yeah, and we caused them. We caused them problems. Uh, all the way through, if you felt like if that was a if that was a league game, um, come mid October, once we've got a few games under our belt, and that front four starts to click, and we, you know, the the final ball starts to starts to get better. Um, yeah, you do wonder whether whether someone's going to get an absolute annihilation at some point. I think I said to um, some of the guys around me that. We'll every chance we'll put ten past someone this season if we play like that at some point because the 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 talent that is on the pitch um, and the way they're going at the moment, the way they're playing at the moment, they will they will cause teams so many problems this season. Rap to me about Sariki Dembele. Dembele. Uh, do you want me to drop yeah. a beat, or are you going to rap freestyle? No, no, no. Well, I'm not going. I tell you what, I'm not going to do. I'm not going to rap. Oh, okay, that's um, fine. I've watched a lot of Hamilton, and I'm very into rap at the moment. But like, you know, is, posh rap. Right, posh rap. Siri okay. Kid in ballet. Go on. Yeah. There's something waiting in the world for you. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Is that from Hamilton? <laughs> kind of. Siri mm. Kid in ballet. My name is Siri Kid in ballet. And there's a million things I haven't told. Talk, talk, talk me about Siri. I thought you said you were going to rap. No, no, he goes into it. I don't know the actual oh, rap bit. Oh, oh, he's rapping afterwards. Okay. Uh, let me remember one and I'll... Uh... <laughs> it's, right, it's fine. Um, <laughs> think... <laughs> it, the, the side he's put out against Shrewsbury and Rangers, he's gone Miyashi one side, Hanson the other. Um, and Dembele's come off the bench both times. He's... His issues last season, and I'm assuming his issues when he was at Bournemouth as well, which is why he wasn't getting in the side. Mm. It, it's not through lack of ability. Like the guy is seriously talented. When he's on it, he um, is on it. Like uh, you know, he on gave, it. What? He gave. It, that was a wrap. Are you okay? That was something, a wrap. Was just... Something happened <laughs> in the last six minutes or something. Um, <laughs> he gave their fallback a, a, a torrid time, you know. Danced past him a couple of times early on. Um, he did the same against Shrewsbury. He's got pace to burn, and he feels like you know. Th there's every chance he he, he may start um, as as the season gets going. But I just sat there and I thought, if you're a League One fullback and you've had seventy minutes, an hour, seventy minutes of trying to deal with Miyashi, yeah, um, uh, Willemson. Um, Hanson, Hanson, Jordan James running from deep. Leonard Alfie now. May, Alfie May dropping deep. Uh, Cochrane on the left hand side getting forward as well. You're absolutely stuffed. You're knackered after an hour. You're probably four nil down, and then Dembele's coming on. Your you give up, wouldn't be, you? <laughs> your head will be in an absolute spin. So um, <clears throat> yeah, it's such a. I mean, whoever, whether he starts Dembele and brings Hansen on, or starts Hansen and brings Dembele on, that that option to come off the bench mm. is gonna again. It's gonna. I keep thinking about like what the opposition are thinking, and mm. there'll be so many teams in League One. We, we've seen it. We've seen what some of the team, the fans of League One, are, are thinking of our. We're signing. in for a shock. 
well no but like the the proper ones like yeah the, now they're starting to realize the same yeah. sensible ones yeah, are yeah. going actually this oh, shit. might tear us a new one there, there was one um, I, I forget what club he's a fan of but he said it's not fair we're now fighting for two promotion spots instead yeah, of three. yeah 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 because you know i think people are starting to think oh my god like if, yeah, they, yeah. if, if this luck click and you know and it doesn't go the way that it has uh, at Blues over the last few years. Yeah. Um, then, then there's, as you say, there's, there is every chance. I just look at the, what, what people must be thinking and going. If, if I was in the same boat, if Charlton were signing the players that we're signing and had the squad that we had, mm. I would be. I would also be saying, Cacking it. Christ, Christ, I hope we finish second or whatever." Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's it's like the championship where the the three Premier League well, teams come last, down yeah. and you go, "What hope have we got?" Leicester, when they, you know, they yeah, bought you got Vardy Harry on the bench. Wink. Yeah, Vardy yeah. was still there. They bought Harry Winks. They mm. bought Connor Cody, in and you know, in the, and you just thought, wow, this, you know, we ain't got a prayer. Yeah. That's what that's one side going straight back up. Then, mm. so yeah, it's. I think we're that side in in League One. Maybe a bit more, even more um, exemplified as it's yeah, League we, One. We are cut above. Uh, that sounds arrogant, yeah. and it's weird to be nah, arrogant but, as a Blues fan. But you know looking what? on paper, we're cut own above it. now. Own, it's time to own it. Oh, you I know, have been owning it on Twitter, mate. I, I, yeah. I'd mute me on Twitter because I'm being. Well, I think we have to. Irritating. I think. Well, I have to mute the, me. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I've had it. I've mute, muted you for a while now, but um, <laughs> since the running really started, <laughs> um, I've got a race on Sunday. <laughs> oh, good, good. I hope it goes well. Um, Ten cap, trying to get can it, Trace. I think, uh, but uh, you know, it's what the owners have said since they've come in that pe- people are going to throw shade at us and and dismiss us as as arrogant or whatever. But it's you know, it's time. It's it now more than ever, more than any other time. We're in League One and we've got a championship caliber squad mm. like now is the time to own it and oh you know it'll help the players you look at you yeah, look at how the yeah. first half went like yeah against rangers like the crowd were purring mm. and that gives the players so much confidence and you know if the crowd are sitting there going just just keep bringing it on you know then the, the players all reciprocate as well well wait uh, I, I know the um the club obviously i look at things that get tweeted from fans and I get the impression they're they're loving the self entitlement and arrogance that that we throw in, and a lot of it is tongue in cheek, and a lot of it is just to wind up opposition opposition but I, fans. But you I know what? I'm going to be tongue arrogant. In cheek. I don't again. want it to be. I don't want it to be tongue in cheek. Not tongue in cheek, but there there is an I, element of like if this goes wrong, we're all going to deactivate our accounts and go into hiding. Yeah. <laughs> like, but th- there's that part of us as Blues fans. But I, I'm personally trying to wind up every single fan of every single club and there's a half a twitter trying to do that and it's fantastic to be billy big bollocks for once yeah not be the underdog it's god damn waiting decades for this yeah to be that team Um, last few years we've all been sitting there going oh christ i hope we stay up please stay up yeah we lost again let's go on twitter and look at the meltdown yeah. Damn right, I'm gonna sit here and go, yeah, we're gonna fucking batter them and we're gonna hundred point season apart. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Definitely, definitely. Um I, back to the Dembele thing. I I would do it your way. I'd go handsome first, Dembele, um, second half yeah. and just yeah, I mean, just interesting that that's how he's gone the first, you know, the, the two games. He's he started the same side, mm. Shrewsbury and Rangers. Now I think I think I said last week or the week before that. I'd like it. I, I'm happy to see that. I'd like him to say, "Okay, based on what we've got now, this is probably my best eleven. What mm. I think is my best eleven, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna nail it, and I'm gonna, we're gonna drill it into him as as much as we can." Like yesterday, the he made the substitutions, didn't he? After an hour or so, brought the nine players on, so they had half an hour. The, do you know? Do then, you know- Sorry, just cut game. you off. Do you know the main problem with all those substitutions, what Chris Davies didn't think of clearly, is that I had to sit with you behind me yeah. over and over again going, why is Tyler Roberts in midfield? Why is Tyler Roberts? Why is Tyler Roberts? Like, honestly, if I took a uh, shot a, for every time you said that, I would be question, dead. Though. Serious yeah. question. It didn't need ans- asking every 30 seconds, Pierre. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it was it was the main point that I was considering for most of the last it's time. the main takeaway from the game. Sorry, I yeah. interrupt you. Continue. But the, so, so those guys who came on had half an hour, 
And then after everybody had left, there was a they brought the goals out and yeah, had another had another and another game because those guys who only had half an hour, he wanted to give them more time together in that team, like that. Whether whether you call it the second eleven or not, the NFL do it, don't they? They yeah. they train the first, they train the firsts, mm. and then the seconds come in and train, mm. you know, the uh, the second stringers, and that's how you sort of get accustomed to playing with those guys. Do you know mm. what I mean? And and at some point, um, someone will come through and be be good enough to be part of the first, and then you go and train with them a bit more. And um, but yeah, just everything about it. Loved loved the first half. Mm. Second half, it get went a little bit off the ball, but you could see that ev- everything they're trying to do is the same as what the was happening in the first hour. They're just not the first string yeah, eleven, yeah, yeah. so so it's it's natural that there's a little bit of a, a cut off. But yeah, so when, many positives. So when many they positives. they brought those temporary goals onto the pitch to do to do this training, yeah, once yeah. all the crowd had left. Uh, yeah. And fans saw that and went, "Oh, perhaps it's a signing video or something." Like we're yeah. so we're so like alien to elite level training and professionalism and all yeah, that stuff yeah. that we see the extra goals. We go, "Well, they're not going to be doing training." Yeah. Are they? <laughs> daft. <laughs> Why would they be doing runs and stuff? Yeah, obviously some gimmicky stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's something yeah, daft's yeah. going on here. Yeah. Um, it, it's great, and and you know what? Looking on on social media and stuff, the ground looks fantastic. It looks a million yeah. miles better than it has done. Um, but we're getting excited about big screens. We're getting excited about um, a proper PA, uh, which is due mm. before the first game of the season. I think Wi-Fi, that's it. Um, Wi-Fi, and and ticket scanning machines. And you put it on social media, and fans of other clubs are going, "Well, you haven't got that yet." <laughs> and you realise, actually, I mean, it's impressive to us, and it's fantastic and brilliant. But also, that's how far behind the game we were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we that yeah. just shows the level of crap we've accepted for so long because we had no choice because we had bshl that a, a big screen is a hell of a leap forward for us yeah yeah and and it, it's great that nighthead have just come in and just dragged us into 2024 yes thank god for yeah, that absolutely um, but yeah i i had fun last night so look looking at that that first team that romped away i mean did rangers even have a shot in that first half never come close not did they? I recall. Uh, yeah, they had one early on, didn't they? I think they broke. Did they break through pretty early? It went to the left hand side, and the guy fired it wide. But yeah, yeah um, very very little in in way of clear cut chances. Yeah, we we they definitely didn't have controlled. Much of the ball. They didn't have no. much of the ball. No, no, not at all. Um, considering that was, uh, I mean, to quote you, the best team we'll probably see at St Andrews this season, barring yeah. a yeah. cup draw. Yeah. Uh, it could be quite it a boring a season, to be honest. It says a lot, really, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, no. yeah. Oh, God, I'm fucking sick of winning every week. Yeah. Can't we just lose once? <laughs> well, uh, I, I was thinking on the way back, they'll have to improve the ticketing system because if you get into the game 15 minutes late every week, you've probably missed two you goals. missed the whole already, game. So, you know, <laughs> we're two nil up after 15 minutes again, so we've missed two <laughs> goals. So, yeah. Um, where do you see Mark Leonard, uh, new signing today, mm. yesterday, if you're watching this Friday, where do you see him slotting into the team? Uh, well, I'll tell you where I'd like to see him slot in, ahead of Tyler Roberts in central <laughs> midfield. You can do all your um, workouts in Las Vegas you want. <laughs> you still don't belong John, there. John, it's, it's not a slight on Tyler Roberts, no. the footballer. Like I don't see him as a central midfielder at no, all. No, 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 to be fair, I'll say the same about Romel Donovan as well. You did, like, often. So so last night, last night when, when, when they both came on, it was Tyler Roberts and Romel Donovan in a sort of flat four midfield, um, which definitely isn't where I want to see them uh, for most of the season. And mm. it's definitely not where I see them making the most um, of their ability, of their talents. Um, I think central midfield is somewhere that they've clearly identified that they want to improve. Um, there's been a couple of rumours of players and obviously the Mark Leonard deal got done uh today this morning was it uh, yeah announced this morning. yeah it announced was at the game morning, last night wasn't pretty it? much sorted yesterday uh, yeah. at the rangers game wasn't it so um so yeah definitely you know jane jordan james and pike are fantastic in that midfield too and you see know, james sticking around well there's there, there's a good question you know, maybe does Leonard replace James if James goes? I've got a better um, question for you to frame it differently. 
if you're Jordan James and you look at the signings we've made, does that convince yeah. you to stick around? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because does Jordan James walk into a Premier League side now? Not now, I don't Probably think. not. Championship, Probably maybe. Not. Yeah, well, but that's the point. You're so maybe, really. maybe, yeah, he'd get into a championship club now. So do you move? Or do you stick around at the club the that you're that you're comfortable that you're like familiar with that you've you've grown up playing you've come through the, the ranks you know they've given you an opportunity to break into the side you've he's already played what is it over hundred games already for is us that many already bloody hell. um so you know at, at, for one season get back up carry on that winning feeling and you're back in a position you're back in the league. And in a in you know in a team that will want to compete for promotion to the Premier League anyway in twelve months time. So if I was James, I wouldn't be absolutely desperate for a move away, unless it's the only the only way you would is if it's someone like a- a- Atalanta and they're in the Champions League and you say, okay, when's when's this opportunity yeah. going to come around again but true. But, but then, does it become one of those English players that goes over to Spain, Italy, France, wherever, and then? Drops off a cliff, possibly. possibly but he, but Although he's Welsh, you know, he'd probably he'd probably um, he'd probably accept and understand that he's not going to start straight away at Atalanta, yeah. and he's going to have to take a sort of Jude role, whereby you make a name for yourself at that mm. club on your own. Um, but yeah, in terms of if it's let's say if, if it's us or Sheffield United, let's say, then yeah. I wouldn't be absolutely busted and got to get out that's for certain no I, I, I think and I don't think the owners will be busted and got to sell him either no no nor me I, I, I think looking at, at what's going on at the club it's a hard it might not be a hard club to want to join Alas Dansfield who will come on to next but I think it'd be a hard club to walk away from if you're already here oh, oh wait, is he 20 21 yeah Jordan is he even is he even that I'll I'll Google it while you waffle. So you know he's he's already a full fully fledged Welsh international. He plays he plays every week uh, every every game for 20. Wales. He's twenty. Yeah. I mean, he's in the prime of his career when we're walking into that new stadium. Let's put it that way. If it's if it's what, hard what, to walk away from. What what what, what, what does Wagner want it in <clears> six years, seven years? Invictus push Games it, are coming 2027. It, Maybe they'll force it, it in uh, three years. Yeah, of course they will. They're going to need a stadium. Seven years. I mean, you're 27 years old. You're in the prime of your life. Premier League, mm. walking out at the new stadium. Could be yeah. captain. Yeah. No, you, you, you're you not know, wrong. That, that Depends narr- on how big your dream, doesn't it, really? That, that narrative is right there for him. I know he's not a Blues fan, but that narrative is there, ready for mm. him to grab someone like Jordan James. So. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, mate, hundred percent. So Stansfield, you had some interesting thoughts in the group chats, which we don't reveal yeah. as a rule. No, we're lots never of dick gonna pics know. in there. Mainly yeah. me and Pew send them to each other. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Jack. Yeah, but the, the more I've thought on your thoughts, I've pondered your ponderance. Oh yeah. The more I consider that conversation we had, which we will reveal to the masses now, the more I think you're bang on. And it hurts me to say that <laughs> because part of me likes and respects you, but so, most of me just hates you with a burning passion. Just those pigs doing that. <laughs> That's mad, that is. That's what Take your is. victory lap. Explain to the people what we talked about uh, and get on with it quick. Otherwise, I'll talk about running again. Um, oh, Christ, I'll get on with it quick then. <laughs> um, no, I think obviously we had the discussion about the potential of Stansfield coming and what an unbelievable signing that would be for Blues. What a statement that would be. Marquee that, of marquees. Yeah, I, to bring him in as a League One club would just be insane. It would be ridiculous. My only query, and, and it's more, as we were looking at it from Jordan James's point of view about leaving, obviously you mentioned about trying to attract people to the club. Mm. And, and obviously Jay was here last year and thoroughly you know by the relegation it seemed like he had a good time he enjoyed his football he scored goals felt important felt part of something um so i get all of that side of it all i would all i would think is 
Jay has been part of the England under twenty ones now for the last couple of campaigns. That's the kicker. Huh? That's the kicker. That's what's what sold me on your opinion. Yeah, you know, it, it, so it's it's not like he's totally out of the out of the picture at the moment. Like, and and nobody's even talking about him. I think I can't remember which Fulham player it was. Was it Johnny Haynes? Um, there there was a there was a piece of. Um, um, Fulham's media and there was a, a an ex-Fulham player um, who was talking about Fulham's all-time goal-scoring record and and at the time um, he, he, they, they were discussing whether that goal-scoring record would be broken and he said if he gets the chance, Jay could break it. Mm. Now, clearly someone at Fulham does not think that if they if they're even entertaining bids of around five hundred uh, uh, five million six million, I've heard as high as seven. Oh, seven million for a, for an English striker like who, in, who's in currently the in the under twenty ones. That's cheap. That is that feels very cheap. So if they they're even entertaining those bids, like the. It feels like that there's clearly someone who's, who's who doesn't rate him as highly as as we do and other people do, but I I just look at it from from Jay's point of view as uh, in two years we've got a World Cup in America, in four years we've got a home European Championships again. Um, Harry Kane is in his thirties. He didn't have the best World uh, Euros just gone. Didn't have the best international tournament just gone. There is there is a space there. The the only other the other two options that were there were Tony and Watkins. Mm. There's a there's an opportunity there, and I I just think from his point of view, you in four years time there's a home Euros. He'll be 25, 26. If he can be playing Premier League football for the next four years, there's. There's every chance that kid goes. He's part of the squad, if not the starting striker. He'll be 26, at, yeah. You know, at, at, at a home European Championships, if he comes to us, he, we, we're sort of, we're going to have to get back-to-back promotions. And even then, he's only got two years in the Premier League. And even then, that's that doesn't guarantee that we go and get another striker when we get to the Premier League who who might outplace him, you know, and all that sort of stuff. For me, I I would find it, if I'm in Jay's boots right now, I would find it difficult to commit to a season in League One right now. Even on loan, possibly, <laughs> if, I'm signing, if I'm signing a four-year contract, knowing that at the end of that four years is a home international tournament, and I'm currently in League One, I'm finding that difficult to do. Even if it's not Fulham that, it, that he stays at. They, yeah, they obviously yeah. wouldn't want to send him to a rival. Does he go, to, Ips- does he go to an Ipswich? Does he go does he to, go to, to you know, Southampton? Yeah. Chadams has just That's been sold. Sort of club. They're left with Adam club, Armstrong, yeah. who's 35 now. Mm. Um, I, I see more him looking at going a, a place like that, and Ipswich, a Leeds, a Southampton, because um, yeah. those offers will be on the table surely. I don't know we're all for about seven the project, mil- for seven million. Pocket you'd, change for them. seven million pounds. You'd expect there to be stacks of offers on yeah, the yeah. table for him. And I get that. Obviously, he had. I'm not saying he took. You know, there's definitely no way he'd come to us. You know, the fact that we the we keep bidding. The fact that we've put the a conversations are being had suggests that they've probably had a chat with Jay yeah, and he's, as far as he hasn't they turned them down. Do you know mm. what I mean? Um, yeah, I, I, that that's my only thing. You know, we we talk about excellence. We've just spoke about excellence. You said it's a lack of ambition. That absolute determination to be the best you could possibly be is is Jay dropping to League One, doing that. Is he mm. really thinking? And if he if he if he says to himself in in his head, I can't, I don't think I can get to that home Euros. I don't think I'm good enough. Then, you know, maybe maybe drop to League One. But the flip, I, I would think a young English striker would would absolutely think that that I can get there. The flip side of it is, if you're on about elite 
and that mentality. Yeah. Is there anything more elite and any bigger test to yourself than looking at League One Birmingham City and saying, I am dragging these to the Premier League on my back? It, that's that's the biggest challenge of all. Uh, yeah. We've just sat for 20 minutes saying we're there anyway, pretty much. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Does, does, does Jay coming in and scoring 40 goals a season turn that around? It probably... I don't know how much of a difference it makes, to be honest. It, it, I think the difference it would make is obviously when, it, when we get promoted and he's back in the championship again. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm not clearly. I'm not turning it down. Oh, I, I, no. I, I certainly wouldn't be adverse to him coming in. Um, I think it'd be fantastic for the club. It would be a great coup. Um, yeah, I, I just think from Jay's point of view that there's there's a real opportunity to be grasped here. And if I drop to League One, am I, am I saying that opportunity is over? It, it's, a, it's a fair talking point. Obviously, pretty much, I don't think any fan doesn't want him to come back. No. Oh, um, my God, no, no. But, yeah, it, it, it's a, a fair talking point. And I think perhaps we maybe we do have to let this big fish go. Um, I mean, yeah. we've got Alfie May, like last but year's like- top goal scorer. Well, yeah, he exactly. You it's know, not like he's, we, he's, we got he's already shown this preseason that the the yeah. guy is a natural finisher. You know, he's, he's he's touch turn shot last against Rangers. It's, you know, classic classic number nine striker. Mm. Um, I was impressed with his with his awareness of the game as well. Though he, he was dropping deep to pick balls up, his his first touch was good. He was bringing other players into play. Um, yeah, he he impressed me actually against Rangers. Yeah. Definitely. Are you impressed by the new away kit? It's all right. It's all right. A bit I, white, isn't it? I, yeah, I mean, I, it's not one I, for the kids. Bit of a, you know, I'm I'm very old, remember? So You are very um, old. Yeah, football kits uh, to ten a penny. Oh, I've seen plenty of them. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's interesting that they've gone white. I can't risk wearing a shirt that white. <laughs> predominantly white and with a with the with the green tinge. I like the green tinge. The fact they've gone predominantly white, um, also financially would make sense. Suggest that there's a third kit coming because obviously you've got um, blue with blue the white, white band or, yeah, white is the home kit. So if you're going predominantly white with the away kit. Um, yeah, suggest there's a third kit coming, which would obviously be beneficial financially for us as well. So, is yeah. the white kit more of a fashion decision for our American oh, yeah. undefeated I mean, fans than a football yeah, kit decision? You could see that. You could see that down LA, couldn't you? That shirt in, in looks better sun. on the on the LA street, on Venice Beach, yeah. Venice Beach than it does oh, yeah. in Small Leaf. Oh yeah, absolutely. With like and, pie and stains you know on it. You can't grumble at that, then, can you? No, hell you know, no. It's I mean, who's who's gonna who's gonna knock at that back? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it it just take, makes business sense. And like like you say, uh, a third kit surely has to come along. Otherwise, we, yeah, we're yeah. wearing an old red kit from last season. Mm. Um, I don't think it's going to be the black and white kit that's been going around those photos where someone's clearly taken the home kit and, and just, just made it black it. and white. It's clever, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It's so always the new kit, yeah. The, the fact yeah. the shirt is laid out in exactly the same <laughs> way. Either Blues yeah. Media Department have got very lazy and, and they wouldn't do that. Dale's a pro. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, you're It mate. reminds me, I need to give you a bell, Dale. You need to, <laughs> to arrange a catch up at some point. I don't even care. Jealousy is okay. work. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, whatever. Um, what? Yeah, no, I, I like it. It's, it's a nice kit, but it, it's yeah. not for me. Um, because. I will make a mess of it. Stick with the home one. Stick with the home one, which I have. It's a lovely kit. I do like that mm. home kit. That's uh, a championship title winning kit. Mm. Or ra- rather League One winning kit. Yes. Um, b- 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 Looking at my notes. We signed Clara, 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 Clara. Since the last episode. Kiara. 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 Um, Russell Kiora. Wilson's wife, the singer. Kiara is a drink in it. Uh, Kiara. Mm. Thoughts. We've signed all of those. We've signed things. all of those. <laughs> Thoughts Knight on all of those. Amazing stuff, aren't they? Um, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he come on, didn't he, give a half hour against Rangers. Yeah, you don't um, think he's a starter. 
based on what to me it's harsh to judge him off half an hour after you judged him a lot in, well he's been in the country what two days mm. and probably had one training session so yeah. um it was a little bit of rust there and the fact that Bielik and Sanderson have looked as comfortable as anything and they're spraying 40 yard passes left right yeah. and center and it looks fantastic sort of you know naturally you're going to uh, towards those two at the moment but you know um that i i trust i trust the the data that they've obviously picked up on the guy um they spent a lot of money on him was it four million plus i think something like that in yeah. the region of so um yeah they you know give him time to bed in and i'm and i'm sure he'll have a, a big part to play going forward definitely uh trevor francis statue has been commissioned um by Douglas something, I forget his name, I'll get it up. Thoughts on the Francis, the, the announcement we're going to have a Trevor Francis statue? It's got to be a good thing, surely. Yeah. Video. Long yeah. time overdue. Yeah, I think, I, you know, it, with what they've done in terms of the Memorial Games and, and everything that they've said that they were going to do for for in his memory, in his honour, um, since Knighted have come in, um, then, yeah, it was always going to come something that we'll be able to move to the to the new complex as well i've no doubt so um and again it's they haven't messed about and got dave down the road to do it have they it's, it's you know it's it's a serious guy that they've got yeah um i've just we, um i found his name douglas jennings he, he's recently yeah. done he's done some work for buckingham palace um uh -huh. high profile public commissions uh he's recently revealed the walter smith obe statue at ibrox uh, and he did my mum's horse there in landings last week. Nice. So he, nice. he knows his stuff, mate. He cleans up yeah. after. He's got one of them Henry Hoovers, which like just just suck really well. Uh, good. He left it. No need for a joke there. <laughs> um, no, yeah, they're you know, unlike us, they're serious people, aren't they? Not <laughs> so. Um, yeah, they, yeah, they've, they've gone to the top. They like you say, yeah, they haven't just not, got they're not matey boy down the road. They've gone. Yeah. Like yeah. geezers done stuff for the royal family. Yeah. And it's one of them that, that, that they've spoke about getting a statue done. They've, you know, they've discussed it for, uh, you know, six months to a year now. So that, you know, they didn't discuss it and then just go, yeah, like you said, first guy available, mm. you do it. You know, they've sat down, thought about the plans. What do they want? Where do they want it? How's best to commemorate it? And we'll go and get the best guy to do it. It's weird being run professionally by people yeah. who care, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, but again, it's 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 you know, it's now time to embrace it. Like it, you know, 100%. get getting this this guy in, this guy in to do it, and you know, it's it is it is newsworthy. And but then you see the fans going, great decision and stuff like. Yeah. It should just should be have been done taken, ten years ago. It it yeah. should now be taken for granted that the yeah. decisions, especially off the pitch, are are done correctly and mm. sensibly and done with the best interest of everybody there. No, this, this is why to this day I still want to speak to a Man City fan on here that remembers the bad old days to ask them just just what it's like and do they mm. even remember those bad old days anymore um, yeah. before money and success. Or whether or it's just natural. Or whether yeah. it just become yeah, they're just taken for granted now. I don't know. Yeah. Um, see if I'll, I can find a Man City fan. Say again. I'll see if I can find a Man City fan. Yeah, there's a few. Yeah. There's a few dotted around. Um, yeah. I watched, because it's been over just over a year now since Takeover Day where we all went out and celebrated, and I watched the live. You did. You were there as well. There were photos of me hugging you and my friend Tom in, the, in Baines's. Mm. Um, okay. I watched the live podcast we did uh, from that day the other day, which I sh it's on this channel, but I strongly don't recommend watching it because it's very drunken and we're very stupid. But we're talking about all the prom not the promises, but the things that were spoken about on that day by the people we spoke to on that day. Yeah. And pretty much all of them have happened. I remember sitting there um, over lunch and the them sort of hinting at a plot of land being bought. You were at lunch. Yeah, that's why I say I remember, not yeah. you. Yeah. Um, I was there as a guest of someone else, so don't make out like yeah. I was given a personal yeah. invite and didn't invite you, you prick. Um. And then, no, it's okay. I'm over it. I'm good. I'm glad it. you get your special dates with Dalmu, and I get the odd lunch every <laughs> now and again. I get to go and test a barcode scanner. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but, Meanwhile, I'm. Hello, is that San Carlo? <laughs> Table for two, please. <laughs> the um, they taught us about 
purchasing a plot of land and, and later that year Wills is bought. They talked about Tom Brady and then a month later Tom Brady's there in a blue shirt. Um, like we were asking them questions kind of almost tongue in cheek oh, are we going to do this then lads and the straight yeah. face yeah probably yeah and then l- look back at that podcast again don't because it's terrible but it all comes to fruition and, and this is what it's like to to be run, run properly yeah and it's odd but and it's serious. fantastic yeah. and and, yeah, yeah. and not everything is fantastic that, that Knighthead have done it um, yes you can still pick faults we're not saying do not ever say bad things about Wagner, blah, blah, blah. If you've got an issue, mm. raise it. Um, but that's why things like Blues Matters was set up so that we can yeah, feed yeah, that back yeah. and the OSCs are set up. So as much as people think that it's a death cult of some kind, um, the branding heals after a while. Once they, once they burn it into your leg, that KH logo, it does okay. heal, so don't worry about it. Um, but th- that's because they know that issues are going to come up, like the turnstiles, feed that back to them, let them know when things go wrong, let them know mm. that Rooney probably shouldn't have been hired regardless of how much Pew loved him. Um but compare them to what we had just over a year ago. My God, we're in a different world, aren't we? I know we're in yeah. League One. Was a, like, yeah, it's a very different world, yeah. yeah. I think it's called Wicker, Wycombe. Wycombe. Wycombe, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, but yeah, you, you're right. It, the the on-field saga of last season, you know, is, is obviously... Uh, the big negative, the big sticking mm. point against yeah, their, yeah. their their year in, in, uh, at the helm. But yeah, th- there's been so much good, so much positive. Yeah, yeah, it really feels like we're on the right track now, and, and I genuinely mm. do think that this is going to be the best season of our lives potentially. Good Ma- yeah, until the next one. Until the next one. Yeah, that, so far, best season of our lives exactly. so far. And exactly. and you know what, I, I do include. I mean, you, is it going to be better than the season we won the League Cup? We got relegated, so well, yeah, we went down, it yeah. depends where, where if you're looking at it as as a whole or yeah. looking at that one-off event. I wouldn't trade that event for anything. Yeah, but it could actually be a whole season of fun. Yeah, but we're in for a shock. That's, yeah. that's, we're in for a shock. That's the oh yeah yeah we yeah we are in yeah. for a shock. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, have, you, have you seen people we'll, say we'll find out we'll people find saying out, um, yeah but League One grounds are a shithole and everyone's like mm. yeah but we'll get 69 points at home because we're going to win every game at home yeah. so fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> love it yeah. Blues fans are just the best like, uh, they're just the best yeah League One <clears throat> League One grounds are a shithole uh, so we won't be able to play our silky football. So we've just signed this six foot four Icelandic <laughs> demon. Yeah. I'll, just, I'll just batter you in the air as well. Geezer looks like yeah. Slender Man. I think we'll yeah. be all right. I think yeah. we'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's it for the blues bit. We're now going to pass over to Mark and Pew from like 20 minutes ago. Or, oh. well, no, 50 minutes ago. And, and our interview with, with Ika. So here it is. Right, we're now joined by Ika Ferregotic. How was that for pronunciation? Did I did I nail it? I did tell you I nailed it. I did tell you I nailed it. Ika is the editor in chief of Forbes and senior news producer and anchor for CNN's affiliate N One, and also adopted Brummy. Welcome to the show, Ika. Thank you very much. Thank I mean, you for having me. No worries. I mean, the obvious question is, how have you <laughs> come to be on a Birmingham City? <laughs> Podcast. Do you have a day? Do you have a day? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try to keep it really short because I don't want to go too much. Into Take the as long but as you it's like. Very, it's very important to tell this story. So yeah. last year, uh, I have, um, usually I'm a war correspondent. I deal with uh, war topics. Uh, I go to war zones. Um, politics is what I do at N1, CNN, and I do business now with Forbes. And when I want to take a break, uh, I will. I would do music because music or sports, that's something that it's, it's, it's an, you know, it's like, it's like a, it's like a vent for mm. me because I spend a lot of time at work. Obviously uh, you can see it on my face. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> oh yeah. You're just being kind. It's okay, Mark. It's well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Uh, so last year in May, I interviewed this uh, amazing band called blue nation, which is a, uh, it's, it's a Birmingham band. Uh, I think you guys should really check them out. And mm. uh, I mean, they, they deal a lot with, uh, mental health, um, and they raise money for mental health uh, organizations. They do a really great job. And one of the members, band members, is Luke Weston. Um, I can call him my best friend, really, uh, an amazing individual. And he's a 
diehard blue nose since he was a child. And mm. he, I mean, his grandfather uh, was a blue nose. His parents are Birmingham uh, City Football Club uh, fans. Uh, his sister, the entire family. And we got into talking and he told me, because I'm very sensitive to children, especially going through, you know, war myself, being refugee myself and mm. uh, covering all these war stories. So he told me about what Birmingham Fo uh, City Football Club was all about. And he told me about Arthur's story. So it mm. took me a couple of um, days to really understand because I'm going to reveal it now. Hope you guys don't hate me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a diehard Celtic fan. No, <laughs> it has, okay. uh, since I was 10, uh, I hope, uh, you know, no hard I mean, feelings there. We beat Rangers the other day, so you're welcome. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Rangers were beat, so thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> so I will, I will go with anyone who's against Rangers. So, you know, <laughs> In this case, it's, course, yeah. it's it's you know the blues, so I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> so Luke Luke told me about uh, everything that, that was going on with Arthur, and I said, you know what, I'm just gonna look for it. He said it's it's on Netflix, or you you know you can find it on ID. Why don't you just you watch it and you tell me what you think about that? So I uh, sat down, and um, that was last year, and mm. I watched it, and it completely shattered me. Mm. Uh, it, it it broke me, it ruined me. And I think, you know, I understand what Luke was telling me now, you know, this is us and we are all about community. Mm. And the commitment to that little boy who was so brutally, uh, who was brutalized and murdered uh, subsequently, um, you know, his last words, um, I posted it on, on, on Twitter. You saw know, it, it was horrible. And people, yeah. yeah. And people saying, coming up to me and saying, you know, we, we can't even watch that again. I can't, I can't. Mm. I mean, I, I watch it um, because I think it's important to, you know, mm. understand and remember the pain of the child. And his last words were, no one loves me. Mm. And, you know, and we got into a discussion about that. And he said, you know, and, and then Gaza war started. And, you know, he's, he made a point saying, you know, but you know what the difference is? Because I watch children getting their limbs uh, completely cut off and, 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 you know, being in war zones. And he tells me, do you know what the difference is between the Gaza kids, which is absolutely horrifying, and little Arthur? And he said, you know, a good point. He said, you know, the kids that are dying in Gaza, they have their parents, they are being loved. When Arthur was murdered, he had no one. Mm -hmm. And he said, no one loves me. And that completely broke. Um, yeah. When I saw that uh, the Blues were playing the Arthur Cup, I felt the need to to write a tweet to post it. And you know, I'm 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 a big football fan. I, I care about the community. I care about the kids. And you know, you guys won me over with what you did uh, with the commitment to Arthur. And yesterday, even yesterday with Trevor, you know, you, mm. you care about things. You know, you don't see many football clubs. You know, they care about money. They care. I mean, everyone cares about money and mm. scoring. And yeah. but but Birmingham City Football Club. What is, I think, the only one that I know that is so invested in the community. Mm. And it just won't be over. So Luke took me to my first um, Blues game, and I have the ticket here. <laughs> I know the okay. tickets are not different because there is now a different system. Oh, you know, we'll yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is my, this is my ticket. Uh, it was awesome. on October 25th, Hull City. Uh, yeah. So Birmingham City uh, against Hull. Uh, city and yeah we lost uh, he was disappointed I wasn't I said this is such a great game you know why because the atmosphere you know mm. the, the dedication of the fans it just feels different it is a good sport and uh, I know a lot has changed there are new signees now and I'm following it I'm learning about it honestly Mark and and, and if you honestly I don't feel that I should be <laughs> on this podcast at all I don't deserve uh, being here because I mean, I mean, this is your story. What I can do with my platform is tell your story. That's that's all I can do. So I hope you guys forgive me, and people who are watching this will forgive me. Just maybe I'm meddling too no, much. No, 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 not at all, not at all. So, no. so I do feel like an imposter. But no, the thing no, no, is, no, no, no. Do you know what? I, do you know what, Ika? Your everything that you've just spoke about when you were talking about Arthur there, um, and um, the the memorial we had for for trevor francis at the rangers game you know the, the whole point of that sense of community and that that once you once you are a, a birmingham fan once you're a blues fan you, you want you aren't you aren't left behind at any point 
So, you know, you, you, you say you feel like an imposter coming on and, and you can tell, you can tell our story to your audience, but it's, as a blues fan, as a Birmingham fan, your story is equally as important to every exactly. other one of us. You know what I mean? So, and, and you yeah. see, that's my point. <laughs> yeah. as, as well as that, just the fact that, that obviously we, we're on the inside, we know the stuff that gets done for Arthur. We know the Trevor Francis Memorial and the statue that's being built, all that stuff. The fact that someone on the other side of Europe can recognize it and see it and sort of associate with it and connect with it as well make, makes your story just as valuable as everyone else's. The yeah. fact that, that you looking Thanks. in can see it I'll and you can, you can feel that makes everything 10 times more worth it, to be honest. You know, um, you know why? You know why? Because we're all human, right? Yeah. We're all mm. human. And if we can't share each other, uh, each other's pain, um, then, then what are we doing here, right? So if we can share it through sport, through community, yeah. through what people are doing, through my job, through uh, the blues games, through, I mean, what are we doing then? Then what yeah. are we doing? We just then, then talk and, I mean, I, I don't know if I can swear on this podcast. Bullshit. Yeah, oh, bullshit. <laughs> and then we just talk. Oh, that was bullshit. too far. That was too yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, rain it in, love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so you can say fuck, okay. I'll say yeah. what you want. <laughs> you know, I'm Slavic, we say fuck a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> it's probably going to be like, right? You're going to beep that out. Hopefully. Nope. Uh, so I just want to thank you for, I want to thank your community and everyone who's listening to this, reaching out to me. I mean, who the fuck am I <laughs> to talk about the blues? I don't belong there. Um, but I want to thank everyone for reaching out and not saying one single bad word. You know, when, mm. when I post things about other football clubs like Celtic, there's going to be the Hearts, the, the Rangers fans coming mm. at me. Oh, mm. what do you want? Like, this is not even your country. Like, Am I not allowed to like, like, like a football club in yeah, the world? Yeah. Like, but yeah. the blues fan, the blue noses, zero words, zero bad words about me being there and telling the story. So I promise, I promise the community, and I will do that. Um, I promise to write a story about Arthur. I promise to write a story about the blues and blue noses, and just honor you all for investing so much in the community and and just being yourselves. I mean, if if you said, Mark, like in the beginning, you said you adopted Brome, Brome. <laughs> um, that's that's a freaking, you know, it's it, it's an honor. It's an honor. I'm gonna have to ask a couple of people. Are they okay with that? <laughs> no, you are. You just have to. You have to say Bab a lot more, though. If you can say Bab, um, I love that word. Gamble, not a forward it. role. It's a gamble. I just all love, the, that's my favorite Brome word. What Bab? Above. First time I I heard it was like. Why are you calling me that? I was like, no, I was <laughs> say that out of love because I thought it was like babe, and it wasn't at all. And yeah, I, I just loved it. I loved it. So yeah, I just want to go back to the story before I, you know, I, I just want to ramble. I told yeah, you, no, go. you go. I'm told you I'm gonna ramble a lot. Sure, sure, sure. Makes a change in <laughs> rambling. So. <laughs> I'm rambling too much. Um, I want to show you a couple of jerseys that yeah. Luke gave me, and I mean, maybe you can guys help me with, you know. Put it in in the time frame or timeline yeah. where they belong because i have no idea i've had them i promised to give them back and i'll probably <laughs> do that yeah yeah honest point. sure <laughs> uh, sure yes i'm always honest unless i'm <laughs> winking so i want to ask you guys you know to put these jerseys in a timeline to help me out is to to understand what um what time they're, they're coming from i'm really interested in this they're definitely birmingham it, city shirts aren't they you, you, definitely. Oh, you're sure Watch yeah this. okay Watch this. Uh, not, that one is an old one <laughs> oh that's old if yeah. that's real stick that on ebay that's worth money yeah that's gotta be that's what Luke told me. i'm not giving these late back. 90s maybe no uh, really? i would guess if i had to guess 98 that's a steve bruce shirt that is you're yeah. kidding me no yeah. I, had, I had that when i was it's like at eight least years old. 18 years old yeah, yeah, yeah. 96 maybe 97 yeah yeah, do not yeah, give that one not, back. I'm not giving these yeah. back. <laughs> I'm valuable. sorry, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have this one. That uh, is 2003-4. Yeah. Uh, 2002, 2003. That was the, the, that's the very first very first shirt with the, when we got into the Premier League in 2002. Wow, that, you uh, guys is, have yeah. the knowledge. That's some knowledge. That's some crazy knowledge. All right, I got this one. This is, I mean, it's... I oh, that's was... a classic. Yeah. That is that is about uh, that was about ten years ago. That's a Lee Clark yeah. classic. That is, yeah, one uh, of the only yeah, orange maybe... shirts we've ever worn. 
mid mid 2010s yeah yeah that that was the right. oi one yeah yeah, yeah. oh this is beautiful the really and high I, for, neck on it. yeah yeah um especially you know we who have this <laughs> <laughs> i thought it, i thought it was it was a dutch themed thing and then it just said this i was like wait hold yeah. on, it's oranje are you yeah. sure like, yeah <laughs> don't sell it i like, no. i want <laughs> That's an old one. one as well. Anything with yeah. auto windscreens. That'd yeah, be around you're the same old. time. Around the, the same one. time as the first one. That one. Yeah, really? yeah, 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 yeah. Not too far off. So like yeah. 18, 18 years. Twenty. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that one's about slightly newer. Maybe. Yeah. About two thousand, maybe. Yeah. Two thousand, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm not giving those back. Okay. No, no, no. Do no. not. Do not give those no. back. Sell those or post them to me, and I will make sure they sell. <laughs> to be honest, part of the reason you're on here is. If we can start selling blue shirts in, in Bosnia and Bosnian team shirts over here, me and Pew get a cut. We've already had that discussion with the club and they said, it's fine. It's business. <laughs> it's business. business. That's, all it is. Yeah. That's the only reason. Yeah. No hard feelings. It's all business. It's all business. I get business. I work for Forbes. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> you, you'll cut us a deal. Fine. That's fine. So was, fine. It, was it Luke from the band who gave you all those shirts? Yeah. It's Luke Weston. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think it's his name is even on the on the ticket. You see here? Have yeah. you just mugged a guy called Luke <laughs> and just took his suitcase and ran? And, and his, yeah, all his shirts. Yeah. There is a Luke somewhere sat at home now going, I recognise her. <laughs> no, tomorrow when this comes out, he's going to yeah. go, That's her. <laughs> she had a balaclava on before and a big knife. But... <laughs> no, no, no. He wanted me to have these and, and just to, to, to learn about the club. Because mm. that's what I said. I just want to. I want to learn. I'm here to learn. I don't. I don't know anything about it. Um, yeah. I mean, just give me what you can. And he just throw all these jerseys at me. And I was like, okay. I said, don't sell those. Those are really valuable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> In his Brummie accent. Those are very so, valuable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no, I'm not gonna sell it. I'll probably just uh, keep them. Okay. Yeah. So, when, so, when's the next time? Ten years. When's the next time you're over? In Birmingham. Well, uh, as you as you know, Mark, I'm sorry, this is our program just going up. Um, so it should be on the 28th of October. Uh, I think, Mark, uh, we spoke about that. So, yes, I'm going to be there for that one. Uh, and for that you're event. coming out to get absolutely hammered with us after. Yes, yes. I think I, think I was supposed to, um, I don't know like do karaoke with you guys or something yeah if at any point you want to give us a taster of your singing skills like no, this is the I don't platform want to. To, uh, there's fun. an entire band in birmingham that can do that for us yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no that would be fun that would be really fun that would be fun yes yes so um, it, as long as i keep these at, in my hotel room so no one mugs me for them. I will. <laughs> I will. I, I knew, I knew we'll it. we'll find I a knew. dark alley don't worry we'll we'll get we'll take them <laughs> off your hands <laughs> So you're planning on coming out to a game when you're over, Ika? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's the reason why I'm there. Um, uh, I spoke to some people as well. Some people reached out to me, like Punjabi. Um, oh, yeah. A part of the, yeah, I said, you know, um, we'll gladly get you a ticket. Like, don't yeah, do it we'll yourself. We'll, we'll come here. We'll be going to sort it out for you. Yeah. And there are some fans, some some really nice ladies. I mean, I made friends. Uh that, that sounded like actually people that could be my best friends mm. and they said like let's let's meet up let, let's do this together uh you, you're welcome so like i said i, I have the imposter syndrome uh no not at all no, you, you uh, i really do no you shouldn't i you shouldn't, really shouldn't. i mean i don't deserve it like there are so many other people that should be in it and i just i want to push them there you know people love this probably way way more than i do but yes i want to learn yes i want to feel that energy again i want to see the new stadium mm. i want to see the changes mm. uh, that are happening at the stadium i want to see how it is now with the new signees i want to see what our uh, chris davis does i want to see what the new owners do you know there's so many things that are different since i was there that mm. i'm really interested from the perspective of someone who really loves sports and who, who loves the entire organization so yes i'm very interested to be there um to being there so yeah let's 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 do it <laughs> let's what was do the it. the whole game you're at was that last season or the season before that was uh so whole let me see so that's october 25th last year last year what could yeah that be? so that we, was Ro that was Rooney's first game at home. We, yeah, we all booed, booed him off. Well, we didn't all boo. Some people booed <laughs> yeah. him off. Um, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, that, that was, <laughs> yeah what a game! To so I'm not saying you jinxed it, but 
You and were the start of the Rooney could downfall. Could have been your fault. Could have been your fault, Ika. Could have, or definitely was. Yeah. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I think so. It was me. Was it, it was me? you? It was you. Well, we'll, well, know. We'll, we'll know if we win every game up to the point where you come over for the game and, and then, then we lose, lose that, that game. We will then know. It'll, def Ooh. it'll definitely be your fault then. And All right. Be so yeah. can, we do, can we do a three out of two? No, oh, we'll mm. two out of three, maybe. Yeah, we'll have to three? do two out of three. Yeah, I think yeah. two out yeah. of two is just, I think it's not fair. No, that's, yeah. <laughs> I think it's just like you don't, you can't make a good assessment with it. So let's do yeah. two out of three. So everybody gets three, everybody but... gets three. Yeah. Three chances yeah. to destroy yeah. the blues. That's okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> three strikes <laughs> and I'm out, right? That's it. Yeah. I'm I mean, you just have to watch it. <laughs> you just have to watch it on TV for the rest of your life, then. Yeah. <laughs> You, I'll, you, I'll be okay with that. I'll be okay um, as long as the Blues win. Uh, I'll be okay with that. But I will be selling those jerseys. <laughs> I'm getting something out of it, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You, you've jumped onto the Blues at the right time as well. We've all kind of got a bit of imposter syndrome uh, since yeah. the new owners took over. Like I don't know what um, what what your friends have told you in the past about Blues and previous owners when we were owned by some very shady people. Yeah, um, I know. I know a lot about it. Yeah, Dan Ivory will will chew your ear off about it. Um, mm -hmm. But like we we're, we're all kind of fresh to it almost. Um, I, yeah. I saw some uh, complaints yesterday with the with the ticketing system, and and people are just complaining about things. I'm like, you know, these are the new things. You know, embrace mm. them. It's going to be difficult at first, but you know, let's just go through it. Let's let's you know, it, as long as people embrace it, eventually, you know, every yeah. change is good if it's a good change. Mm. Every change is good. So I'm really looking forward to see what uh, to seeing what's happening. Yeah. Uh, in, in, so that's October, September, October. So it's going to be exactly a year since I was there last time. So I okay. think a lot has changed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, just just between that year, yeah. but then go back even further. Two years. Like, I mean, how long ago was? Was half the ground closed, Pew? Was it like three years yeah. ago now? Yeah. Um, we, we couldn't even open half the ground well, yeah. because there was a risk well, of it falling uh, down. The start oh. of last season. The start of last season, yeah. it was still closed, wasn't still it? Closed. The lead, the yeah, lead game. I remember. I remember. The oh, lower block, yeah. On the other side, so I remember yeah, yeah. Like they, half of the stadium was closed off. Yeah. And I was like, so he said, well, it's just things happening, reconstruction. It's it's not going yeah. well. So don't worry, it's going to be there. Yeah. And I'm seeing the, the the stadium now and I'm seeing things that are changed. I'm like, wow, like yeah. I, I really want to feel that energy now. I want to really see that. It looks amazing. And you know what? Regardless of the win or not, yes, it's important regardless of it. Just mm. being there, feeling that energy, seeing yeah. the beauty of the court, right? Of, of the beautiful green grass mm. and and just people playing the, the most valuable and the most amazing sport is just enough for me. Mm. It really is. So that's why, that's why I just want to be there. Definitely. Yeah. I really, I really love what you've said about, um, cause actually being, being a blues fan and going week in week out, especially over the last few years when results haven't gone, been hard. haven't gone yeah. well for us. You can get downtrodden a bit with it, I think. And you yeah. thought, I think it's it's quite easy to lose what sport is supposed to be about. You mentioned it at the very start about your work, how sport and music are a Puts release things into perspective, for you. doesn't it? You know, it, you see, it really does. You see so much in your line of work that actually your release needs to be exactly that. It just mm -hmm. needs to be mind off everything and and to enjoy what you what you enjoy doing in your in your off time and sport in itself is it, it's crazy how just 11 guys who you don't know yeah go out and kick a ball about and make such an a valuable yeah. impact on your weekend on your life um and and that in itself is weird but I, as you say it's it's the everybody coming together yes. in that in that one moment to to celebrate what makes them unique what makes them you know similar to each other everybody's got different political views yeah, everybody's the one got... thing that connects us yeah exactly. we all exactly. we all turn up on that saturday and we all want blues to win at the end of the day and for you know that that does get lost i think sometimes so for you to come on yeah, you know, and just reiterate that really, I think is is pretty important. Thank you. And that and there's another um, maybe point that is very important when it comes to that. I agree with everything you just said. Uh, 
this is not fun. We're not debating anything. <laughs> like I'm used to debate no. people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're just agreeing on everything. Uh, <laughs> the thing is being on the right side of history, right? So when I think about blues and I think about what they've done for Arthur, for Trevor, for Mar Gaines, okay? When I think about um, their commitment to the community, like I said, you know, when, when I say commitment to the community, it sounds like a platitude, like something that we keep saying over and over again, but it's yeah. a very powerful statement. Mm, yeah. uh, when you see that, you feel like you're on the right side of history. Yeah. You feel like you're on the right side of, of the, uh, yes, it's 11 guys chasing a ball. This is yeah. what people who are not football fans that will say yeah like, why would you spend 90 minutes or 120 minutes yeah and the penalties watching 11 guys <laughs> really yeah is that even a question you know it's yeah. hard to understand it's hard to give the answer to that but it's exactly pure what you said it's those 90 no, minutes or 120 yeah, minutes that gives you a, a, the escape from whatever you're going through and that, that little hope in life that we need and like yeah. i said being on the right side of history doing good for the community especially you know you feel like okay the, i'm on the right path here mm -hmm. you know it it freaking matters it really yeah. matters and it matters to me so um yeah the um the community aspect of it as well so since nighthead came in and, and bought the club and whatnot <clears throat> there's a there's a massive mm -hmm. steer into raising the local area around st andrews at nighthead park um mm -hmm. the the blues foundation like the, the sort of charity that feeds the local area um just the amount of time, effort, and money that gets pumped into that. It, 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 it's almost like everything the Blues do now, there's a slant on it of how can we also help the local community with it. Yeah. So yeah. the new yeah. the new concession stands, for example, where they've got some new um, biodegradable cups or re sorry, uh, single-use cups, reuse cups, whatever I'm talking about. It costs 10p to get mm -hmm. one of those. You can get the 10p back if you go back to the, the counter and get it, or that 10p goes to charity, and that charity is the local community. And it's there helping local schools and the local population. And there's such a, a fixation on the city of Birmingham in general. They've re -adopt, really adopted that Birmingham on the rise again. They don't say yes. Birmingham City on the rise again, Birmingham City Football Club on the rise again. They say Birmingham, the, the city. Um, they, they, they want to encapsulate the whole identity of Birmingham yeah. and, and bring the whole area up. And the f again, the fact that that you see that on on not, you're not an outsider, but from a distance, the fact that you can see that yeah. just means that it's of working. Course. Everything everything with Arthur that was such a, a tragedy that really brought so, like all Blues fans and everyone in in the West Midlands, if not the country, yeah. together. Just reading that story, it was beyond horrific. When you put that tweet up, as I say, I only read half it. I couldn't watch that video. It, it's, it is heartbreaking. I've read the full article once, and that's burnt on my memory for life I, I don't need to do it again but as you say everyone just sort of downed every other issue in their life yeah. focus solely on that and the solely on moors arthur cup is the focus exactly i saw six seven hundred people within 24 hours gathering around the tweet you know you know sometimes we put up something and we think okay you know it's just, it's just a tweet but it, it's mm. not always a tweet so how many people gathered uh, to support that many people said just like you mark i couldn't watch that i could yeah, watch yeah. that hot, and many yeah. people said but it's just it's burnt into our memory and this is you know thanks for reminding us why we're doing this and you know if i contributed just a little bit to, to arthur's memory then you know i think i've done my job as a human as a journalist as a as somebody who has that platform i mean what am i supposed to do like put like half new pictures on on that like what is my purpose really so what i I want to do is really you know just it resonate it resonated with me and like you know when you talk i'm sorry you hear the program here uh, okay. you know we, we're on air right now um <laughs> so what resonated what resonated with me is exactly what you just said mark and you what you said is you know when people talk about the blues and and you know the sense of pride when they say i'm a blue nose um it it is just different. It's but I say I'm a Celtic fan. I've been Celtic fans since I was ten years old. You know, okay, yeah. So no one gives a shit. Really. But you know, when you when you hear from a blue nose saying, "Hey, I'm a blue nose," the, the sense of pride that that they say it with, just just like just like my friend Luke, like the, 
the character from the beginning of my story, when he talks about it, the passion that he puts in it, it's just, you cannot not be part of that or mm. wanting to be part of that or, mm. one, or not wanting to learn more about that. Yeah. So yes, I mean, you guys are just different. I, I can I can tell you that I've been everywhere in the world. I mean, I've lived in 14 countries. I've supported 14 different clubs, but you know, mm. coming across you guys is just, it, it blew my mind really, really. You guys, is, you're, you're something else. You're different. You're oh, different. awesome. No, it, it, and thank you, lot. really, thank you. No, yeah. but it is, it's the truth. It's the truth. Mm. We um just on the off thing, we had an email in. Uh it says I'll read out. Hi there, we are Brummies and Blues fans living in New Zealand and always watch your podcast. Loving what is happening in the blues. Finally a real blue sky on the horizon. Just asking, will there still be a tribute to little Arthur, do you know? His story broke that broke our hearts. That's from Helen and I'll find the other person's name because I forgot it because I'm useless at this and yeah. a real a real well, the, podcast host would have I've- Look Obviously, the the, the the Arthur Cup is is a, an annual event now, isn't it? That that will continue for uh, uh, you know forever. Forever, um, I say, yeah, yeah. Same as the Trevor we, we, Francis, you know, which forever. is important because you know, as Eek has mentioned, it, it is something that shouldn't be forgotten, and it should Ever. never, you know, it, it's part of it's part of our history. It's part of our fan history. You know mm-hmm. the. And and you know it, it meant so much to us at the time, and and it and it should mean so much to us going forward as well. So yeah, we got yeah. Um, Arthur's corner. I, I I think the email I was asking, is that when we move grounds because we've bought this massive plot of land and we're going to move everything mm. over there. Um, I don't know for certain, but I would be amazed if they don't carry Arthur's area into that. Um, yeah, that'll be something. I, I'm almost yeah. certain they will. Like, we've got outside the ground all the, all the bricks, the personalised bricks with people's names on. I know the intention is to dig all those up and move all those over to the new ground. Because, yeah. again, the current owners we've got care about Blues, the club, Blues, the fans, yes. the local area, the city of Birmingham. It's just... It, yeah. I, I don't think it's even it's even uh, I don't think it should even be questioned. No. I think it's just gonna happen. It's 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 something that's gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, I'm hundred percent sure it really matters. Um and, and you know, we just had Arthur Club. That's why I put a tweet up when I saw yeah. hashtag Arthur Club. I said, Oh my god, is this what I think it is? Yeah. Uh it resonates with a lot of people. And like I said, you know, there's gonna be 20 million audience here is gonna learn about Arthur's story. And um I, there is no chance in life that that is not being brought to, to the new, new ground. Mm. And if it's not, then uh, there are people like you, there are people like like Luke Weston, there are people like uh, other blue noses that I that I that, that I met. Um, that are going to make sure that that happens and uh you know I, i'm i'm here if you guys need anything i'm here if you need anything to to you know to, to say to talk about to participate in a, in, a, in a wider discussion about what the arthur memory is yeah i would love to have you guys on so um yeah, no sure. definitely so i think it's out of question that, that that's not gonna um, be moved so. Agreed, yeah. so, it would before, be crazy. before we wrap it up Celtic. Like it's just me. It's just me talking. Then no, no, I thought you no. guys were going to talk about the match yesterday. <laughs> no, we'll 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 do that in a separate segment probably. But th- this is without the, me. No, no, no. no this, this is, is this is the important. This is the important bit. Yeah. That's us waffling that people won't actually watch. This is the the focus yeah. on, on you. Um, but Celtic. Why? Why? I was ten Why? years old, and I was a. Uh, we just escaped. We were expelled from our home in '92, and uh, so I only have my mother and two sisters left. Right. Uh, so we were thrown to Austria to refugee camps. Eventually, ended up in a refugee camp in Croatia. So in '94, um, when I was ten, I watched. A, a match. I always loved football. I watched the match, and I didn't know who it was, but it was definitely the boys in in green, green and white stripes, wow. and uh, they were playing. I don't even know. I don't remember. That was that's exactly thirty years ago. Yeah. Am I this old? I'm old. <laughs> I'm forty. Don't look day over ago. thirty-nine. Oh <laughs> yeah, don't think. <laughs> so, so much better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. Um, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> um, no, it's uh, so. What happened? Um, I was sitting. I was watching the game, and you know, we didn't have much. We had 
one old TV and there were 50 children from the camp watching that. That was that was our one thing. And I saw in the audience uh, a Bos old Bosnian flag, right? So this is war. This is 94. Um, mm. We are about to get genocide. Uh, Sarajevo has been already three years under siege. Um, children being killed, two million people displaced. I was one of them. Children murdered. Um, I mean, there are so many people from the UK that participated in, in uh, saving the kids and being there in, on different missions. Trevor Gibson, for example. Um, I mean, I can give you so many names. Um, so what happened? I saw the Bosnian flag in that part of the, uh, the fan zone. And they all wore their uh, stripes, right? So uh, green and white stripes. And it was just amazing for me, mm -hmm. for someone who's been expelled, someone who had nothing left anymore, someone who missed school because nobody wanted to have us there because we just, you know, refugees in a refugee camp. You probably, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you see what's going on in the world and how people are being mm -hmm. treated. You know, we didn't have social media then, so we couldn't tell our story. Yeah. So the, the way we were treated was just, it was just horrible. Seeing that, just it, it won my heart. Mm. It, it, how can you not mm. uh, feel close to that club? So I started loving them and following them and learning about them. And 30 years later, <laughs> they featured me in their, uh, they heard about my story. So they featured me in their quarterly magazine on six pages, okay. exactly about what I'm saying now. I was, mm. I mean, I felt like they, you know, being honored like that, I felt again like I was an imposter. <laughs> I mm. didn't deserve it. Yeah. But seeing that, it meant something. So for me, when it comes to football clubs, it has to have a meaning to something bigger and that is beyond me, beyond you, beyond the players, beyond the club. And they did that for us. I'll never forget that. And I'll, I'll always be grateful for that. Because no one in 94 would talk about us. No one would talk about genocide or no one would even stand by us. And I saw that. And it was just two seconds on the split screen. Yeah. And that was it for me. And that was it for me. So yeah. I, I was I was so young when the, the issues in Bosnia were going on. Um, as a child, I just knew there was trouble in Bosnia. That that was it. Um, I can't even begin to imagine what it must have been like to to be there, suffering under it. Um, it, it, uh, it 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 leaves a mark on you, but it uh, it it can it can change you. It changes you. Uh, you can either go this way or that way, right? Mm, you become yeah. a, a very grumpy and hateful person that hates everyone around themselves, and you know dealing with PTSD and you know just you close it, or you get up and you say, okay, this happened to me, and this happened to my family. We lost a lot of members of our family. This happened to our family. I can now try and be the voice to those who are voiceless because mm. I get to do that. I get, I have the platform. So staying silent on things like genocide or Gaza or, or Arthur's story or a uh, Trevor's story, or it, it, I mean, my existence would just be, it, it would be anything, especially after going through that. So I'm trying to be, a good person you yeah. know I, I have my flaws but i'm trying to be a good person and and you know to tell the stories of those who maybe can't yeah is, I, is that what led you down the the path to journalism would you say exactly uh i'm a i'm a software engineer <laughs> i'm not okay. a journalist and it just happened and uh i saw i mean do we have time I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, we, we like can go all night so i yeah, I, I'll, I'll just yeah. I'll just tell you this. This is this is this is a crazy story. Okay, oh. so I saw a picture. This is twenty years after after the war, mm. right? I saw a no fifteen years. I'm sorry. So I was I ended up in the Netherlands where I had my children, where I uh, graduated. I had my life, right? I'm, I'm a grown up person. I have my family, and I saw a picture of um, a child being murdered in Sarajevo. So a child laying in a pool of blood and two firefighters, uh, UN uh, members, standing and trying to, you know, uh, secure the area. So that picture really, you know, it, it, it's pierced in my mind. Mm. So what happened, I came back after 20 years to see where I, where I came from. I wanted to see, okay, what happened? I, I never came back, right? My family never came back. My mother and my sisters, they never came back. So it's just me here. Yeah. And because of that picture, 
I wanted to ask the difficult questions. Um, so what happened? I switched. So I said, I'm, I'm going to do my best to become a journalist. And I am now, I mean, 14 years later, yeah. I am where I am. It's, it's, I mean, it's hard work, but it's, it's so rewarding. So what happened with the picture? I had a friend for years, uh, Trevor Gibson, right? So he's Scottish. He's uh, he's uh, he's been in Bosnia. He's even been shot in Bosnia, and we hang out. We talked about music. He's one of the uh, good friends of Bruce Dickinson. I interviewed Bruce oh, no Dickinson. Way. Yeah. So we we were just hanging out. We were good friends until I realized that was Trevor on the picture. Oh no way! I said no because I saw it on his, on his Instagram. He said, "Oh, it's thirty years since this." I said. Trevor, this is not you. Please don't tell me it's you because mm. I would feel so stupid. Oh and he said, no, I thought you knew. I said, I had no idea. No I mean, way. you're my friend. It is, there's just no way. And uh, it's, it's, you know, things like that, it, I don't think it's just a coincidence. Yeah. No, that's, that's no what way. it is, isn't it? That oh. is, yeah. That's, it's because that's of Trevor I'm there. Because of yeah. Trevor, I took on journalism. Because of that picture, I took on journalism. And he just yeah. happened to be my friend. It's just it's just amazing. It's Bloody crazy. Hell. What an amazing person, Trevor. It's an amazing person. Yeah. You just yeah. Nev nev never know where life's going to lead you, I suppose, do you? Never. And, never. And the people you well, you, you hear a story like that and you think, well, it doesn't matter what you think. Life will find a way of making yeah. sure that you're in the right place because yeah, yeah. obviously your, you know, your upbringing and, and what you saw as a child, Ika, and you know, you meet Trevor and and look what uh, how that happened. So yeah, yeah, it's just you know you cannot make this up. Yeah, you can't make this up. Trevor yeah. was actually the one. This is crazy too. Trevor was the one who introduced me to Blue Nation band. Oh, okay. And, and Luke Weston who introduced me to the Blue to the blues yeah and now i'm talking to you and now you're here on, yeah on and th this is really the pinnacle of most people's lives to come on this show <laughs> so i mean cnn is impressive and yeah forbes it's a global name whatever but fat lads going goal not many people go on that eco i'd rather be here if I'd this rather... isn't top of your cv going forward i'll be very annoyed yeah it's on top of my cv <laughs> <laughs> yes i hope my uh boss is uh, hi boss <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no I'd, I'd rather do this honestly i'd rather do this um we can we can discuss it uh, you know in in a first person we can talk about things openly you know news is news news yeah. is news you know but this is this this matters this is important this is again for the community because you guys are doing a very important job just sitting there talking about it this is how you engage with your community it's very important i'm really really grateful and thankful for you you know being invited on here no we're we're, we're, we're honored to have you honored to have yeah. to have you join us so before we, we let you leave and do like real journalism <laughs> instead of our nonsense how do you think the season's <laughs> going to go for us <laughs> please don't ask me that i need you to give a, a, a definitive answer so we can hold it against you in 40 odd games no time. i can't I, I i think i should not i'm gonna jinx it <laughs> yeah, that's true actually yeah. it's two out of three we said two out of three i don't want to jinx it that's true. I, I, it's not my place please don't ask me that i you must, I jinx, must be I jinx things optimistic <laughs> with the with the results that we've had recently especially the one um against, against rangers, rangers last night right. though yeah yeah well if it goes like that i mean yeah but you know maybe that's luck <laughs> i'm not sure you know it's hard let's see two out of three okay yeah Let's so, see the three. Let's make an assessment. Let's get, let's get a win under your you belt. On. Yeah. I mean, we'll get a win under your belt. I get, yeah. Basically, what you're trying to say there is we're going to win every game. We're going to get 100 points this season <laughs> and we're going to blow teams out of the water. That's basically what you said, wasn't it? Yeah. Exactly what I we said, can quote yes. you on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. I but, thought so. You know, I knew it. I knew being, it. Being, a, being a cautious journalist, I want to see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, exactly. So, can I come back to you on that one? <laughs> you can. You come back at the end you of the need season. To and source your evidence, don't you? Source your evidence. Check and double check your sources, the math, and then you know, we'll get back. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Rice, thank you very much for joining us, Ika. Oh, it's been an you, absolute God. pleasure, and it definitely yes. won't be the last time, unless you're sick of us already. Uh, no, we'll get God, you on no. during the season, and we'll see you when you come over anyway. So oh, we're yeah. going to see each other there exactly. exactly, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, no, again, thank you. Um, this this is amazing. Uh, yes, I'll see you guys soon. See you soon. Reach out. I'll reach out to you and see you soon. I have a good one, right? Definitely. And you <laughs> thank you. Too. Right. Thank you very much, everyone out there for watching Fat Lads Going Goal. Um, thank you to Ika for coming on. Thank you for Purio Massive. for coming on. Yeah, thank you, Ika, for a great show. And thank you, Mark. Mark. 
Not no. Mark, okay. Thank you, Mark, thanks, for hosting very well. Thanks, yeah, no Mark, worries. for hosting. Great show. Well, yeah, no, thanks. Well, no. I uh, really appreciate That's your time, right. no words. Thanks no worries. so That's much. Fine. No worries, no worries. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, everyone out there, for watching Fat Lads Go and Go. Please do like, share, comment, and subscribe. Oh, and a special thank you to the couple whose names we should have asked for, mm. but we didn't because we're morons. But we saw, them on, we saw them on the way back to New Street after the Rangers game, and yeah. they uh, serenaded us with a Kevin Long song. Yes. <laughs> Which reminds me, now we've got all these signings, we really should do another Fatter Vision song contest. Mm. Um, yeah. If you can fit Williamson into a song, yeah. then... <laughs> yeah. More power to you. Um, but no, I, I apologise for not asking your names. I'll give you a shout out. If you email me, I'll give you a shout out on the next episode. But you two made my night. Um, it was great to meet you on the way back to, to New Street. So yes, thank you. Um, Friday, August the 2nd, so-called studios in Acot Green. It's right by the train station. There's an NCP car park over the road. Please get there early if you want to see... For dogging. For dogging. If you're happy to stand at the back, then... Fine, don't worry about it. There'll be a bar. Mm. We're opening the doors at 7. The show starts at 7.30. Um, we, it's a guest list, so if you haven't had your tickets, don't worry because there aren't any. Uh, all you got to <laughs> do is scan your OSC barcode and, yeah. uh, to get in. Because if you're not in the OSC, you're not coming in. It's the branding. It's the, brand, yeah, it's the, the branding. <laughs> the heat from the brand on the leg will <laughs> yeah, open the door, basically, so you'll be fine. No, we, we've got a guest list, so if you've paid, we know... We'll e what I'll probably do, in fact, what I'm going to do is email everyone who we've got on the guest list um, directions to the place just in case um, and little bits and bobs about when it's opening and whatnot. Uh, if I haven't emailed you by... Uh, it's on Friday, isn't it? So if I haven't emailed you by Wednesday night, email me and say, Oi, Brick, I paid. Where's my details? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's going to be great. We'll see you there. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Bye. Right.